One of the nice things about growing in high tunnels is you get a very intensive high production out of a small square footage. Many of our urban growers and people that don't have large acreages are really attracted to high tunnels because they can still get a pretty sizable volume of produce out of a relatively small square footage high tunnel. A very typical size for a high tunnel is a 30 by 96 foot or a 30 by 48 foot high tunnel. One of the things that we see a lot of growers doing is going to wider tunnels. The larger the volume of air inside the high tunnel, the higher the thermal mass is going to be, and so it's going to be able to collect more heat and provide better protection overnight for the crop. So in this way, the bigger the tunnel, the better in terms of its ability to absorb the sun's energy and then utilize it. However, the wider the high tunnel is, the harder it's going to be for it to retain a snow load. And so you'll find that our wider high tunnels tend to have quite a bit more structure in terms of bracing and in order to protect them from a snow load in the winter or even wind during the summertime. And so typically high tunnels, once they get wider than 24 feet, they get a little bit more expensive. That being said, a 30 foot by 72 foot or a 30 foot by 96 foot high tunnel is very typical in this area because growers can put five to six rows of vegetables inside it and it'll do very well. Another important consideration in the size of the high tunnel is going to be the height of the sidewalls. It's really, really important that you're able to ventilate this high tunnel during the summer so that it'll actually stay nice and cool inside. So we like to have pretty tall sidewalls. Now, 10 years ago, when people first started using high tunnels, they would have three foot sidewalls. However, most people have gone away from that and are using five and six foot high sidewalls, especially in places that don't have a lot of wind. Here in Kansas, you could probably get away with a shorter sidewall because we have so much wind. But in places like the southeastern U.S. where they don't have very much wind, they want to use very, very tall sidewalls in order to get a lot of ventilation through them. So one of the choices that you have when you build a high tunnel is whether or not you use one layer of plastic or two layers. There's a lot of advantages to using two layers of plastic. The dual layer plastic is inflated with a small fan, like a squirrel fan is what we typically call this. And although this adds cost and you have to have electricity, it's also a great advantage because it holds up to the wind much better. And in Kansas, that's very important. The nice thing about a single layer of plastic is it's obviously easier to put the plastic on when you have to do it and less expensive. One thing, especially here in Kansas, that can be a big question with high tunnels is how long that plastic is going to last. Typically, the plastic is rated for a four-year lifespan. However, if you have a windstorm come through and tear it up, it's going to not last that long. And once a piece of plastic is ripped in half, you're not going to be able to use it again very well. Really, the life of the plastic is dependent on how you treat it, and more importantly, how the environment treats it. We see lots of different end wall types, structures, shapes, materials used with high tunnels. This is one of the places where we let the, our creativity flow, as so to speak, in order to, to build what suits the grower or whoever is using the structure. Uh, one thing that's really important when building a high tunnel is to have a nice big opening so that you can get a small tractor or some other type of vehicle in it. One thing that we find is at the end of the year, it's really nice to be able to back a pickup truck inside of that high tunnel and pile all the dead plants in there to be hauled out to the compost pile. And this is definitely something to really consider is having at least one door that you can fit a pickup truck or a small tractor through. That being said, most growers will use small walk behind rototillers in order to do the tillage management inside the tunnel, especially for our smaller tunnels. Now some of the big multi-bay tunnels and some that have very tall sidewalls, you can use tractors through. Oftentimes we'll actually back the tractor up to the end wall and then drive away from that so we can till all the way into the corners. And sometimes we'll use a small rototiller just around the edges where the tractor won't get to.